All right, this is Jarrell from Hybrid Radio here at the Gramercy Theater in New York City, and it is my great pleasure to introduce you to a legendary uh, ska punk uh, musician. I'm here with Jay Navarro from the Suicide Machines. Hey, Hello, Duncan. how are you? That's... My sister's name is Jarrell. <laughs> you are not so original anymore. And I'm glad you didn't go with the uh, <laughs> Superman like reference that everyone goes with when they say my when they find out my name. But I really appreciate that. Ah, uh, no kidding. You know my uh, my sister's nickname is Jory. Uh huh. Everyone calls her Jory. All right. Cool. Cool. So uh, they're here touring with the uh, they're playing the Destruction by Definition Destruction by Definition, right? Yep. That's I I don't know why I forget the name, but I love this out. I love this record. A couple more years, you won't be able to remember anything. It's all good. <laughs> They're to- they're touring with this album and they're also playing with the uh, Bastardus. Yep, we got Bastardus, which is a uh, Rich, uh, the bass player of the Suicide Machines. Uh, you've got my other band, Break Anchor. I'm playing with them. You've got Derek doing his uh, acoustic set solo. You know, because he just had a record come out, so it's been fun. Just gaggle of dudes from Detroit, pretty much. And Derek was uh, actually uh, one of the original uh, drummers, so um, to speak. Not he was the, the first. Th- he one. was the third drummer, I think, or I don't even know. Third, there you go. So he was actually on the uh, Destruction. Yeah, he's album. the dude who played on that album, though. He so played he on that. Playing, he'll be playing on the yeah that set tonight too. Absolutely. Right? All right. So this tour's been going like for a week now. How has it been going so far? Pretty awesome. Uh, even the small show like Poughkeepsie was actually somehow pretty intensely fun, man. Everything else has been ridiculous fun. I I don't the the turnouts are amazing. So I don't know. I kind of just think you know we don't tour anymore. So you just kind of feel like maybe people just forget about you or something. Uh huh. You know, but uh, I don't know, man. The co- East the, Coast. The crowd's you know? been acting well. Like, have you, do you have any like good stories that would like make G.G. Allen be like, damn, that was the punkest thing I ever seen in my life? Any on this tour, no. On tour? no. Not on this tour. <laughs> and I have seen G.G. Allen. As a matter of fact, I saw him while I was on acid when I was a kid. It was sweet. All right. You got to tell that story in a second. <laughs> yeah. We could come back to that. All right. So uh, the songs you wrote on Destruction by Definition, do they still reflect your life now? Nah, no. No. I mean, I think, are you still wearing Vans, like, honestly? Uh, boots, mostly. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a warehouse roughneck kind of guy. I, I wear boots constantly. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm wearing Vans right now, obviously. But All right. So uh, he's, still, he's still loyal. He's every still loyal. pair of skate shoes that I've had that I've actually skated in, since I can remember now, I've never bought anything but Caballeros or TNTs. So that's I've always skated in Vans since probably at least for the past 15 years, if not longer. I don't... I had, like, one pair of Etnies, like some Mike Vallelis once, and I was like, nah, no thanks. No, you don't like Etnies? No. Nope. I, th- I thought they were okay. I mean, yeah, it was okay. They're better than Airwalks. I only got them because they were vegan at the time, just to check them out, and they're Mike V's, and then I used to kind of, I used to follow that guy a little bit and see, you know, see what he's up to, and I got them, and I was like, I don't know, I just felt like I was wearing boots, and I couldn't skate in them, so. Yeah. Well, what can you do? But what, what the other songs on the album, they don't pertain to you I anymore? Know, so, I think some of them do, man. I think, like, a lot of the songs where you're kind of, trying to figure out who you are as a person, you know, find yourself and it's the hard it's like this is the hardest thing there is to do. All right. Is be yourself, you know what I mean? And I think that like no matter what that still stands true, you know, till to the, even today. It's so I mean, I think I feel like I know who I am now, you know what I mean? But I, I still feel time. like okay. I, I hear that I go back to those songs and I kinda of feel like those still stand the test of time, at least in they my in my do. life, you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. But then I'm, guys... I'm no longer committing crimes anymore. So when I talk, <laughs> when there's like quite a few songs about crime in there, that yes, I was a little bit of a criminal when I was a kid. Uh-huh. I am no longer criminal. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. Any uh, any like crazy arrests that happened at the time or back then? Oh man, I got away with everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so I I've I've been really fortunate. I mean, I've I've had some arrests, but not back then. <laughs> right. Expunged off your record, so it's no big deal now. Yeah, right? copy man. I just I got really lucky quite a few times. So I've been nice. beat up by cops and had lots of drugs on me and not caught with them and guns pushed in my face and all kinds of fun stuff. So police police brutality still existed twenty years ago. You know what though? Sure. I didn't have to worry about getting shot by the cops. Yeah, yeah. How about yeah. that? Exactly. Well, obviously you're still here. So. Yeah. <laughs> I fit, I could not assume you uh, did not get catch a bullet in the ass at all. No, but my roommate. Actually got shot by the cops, but that was, uh, we were staying in quite a rough neighborhood at the time, and then uh, we were playing football at the time with the guys who were in the crack house, and I just left with my dad from the house I was staying at, which is the singer of my old band, SBLC's house, and the big, we call them the big four, the big three, and they rolled around unmarked and undressed, and they would like shake you down in the neighborhood and beat the fuck out, beat the crap out of you. Anyways, Detroit, you're saying, right? Yeah, Detroit. we got done playing football, and everyone went on the porch and was drinking 40s and smoking blunts, and uh, 
the car rolled by and all the cops got out and shot the whole house up, shot my friends. Got back in the car and just drove off. Was he all right? Or no, he lost. He, he lost, lost a bunch of his fingers. Okay. He got really lucky. All right. Well, he he lost his fingers, but that's, saved his life. Though. Yeah, that's lucky if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even the, you know, if you got a barrage of cops shooting at you. Now we're gonna get to the sophomore album, Battle Hymns, which mm-hmm. I felt came off more as like a political punk rock album as opposed to like the first one, which was like like a more of a upbeat ska album. Yeah. So what what were the conditions that conditions that made you guys? Become more political, I should well, say. Well, I mean, we were always kind of involved in, like, I guess if you want to call it, like, the that sort of scene anyways. Like, so as far as those bands and those places we played, I wouldn't call us ever political. But uh, I think at the moment, what really drove us hard was, I mean, we had songs like SOS and stuff, which were more yeah. social issues. But I think what what really happened is, like, we kind of, it was hard for us to accept, like, being on... MTV or being in magazines is really weird to us. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of almost like rejected the whole idea of it with that album. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I can't explain it. it was kind of like, was it the, burn your own bridge on purpose? Yeah, was it the, like, the fact that at that particular time, like, like the the sky was becoming like a like a trend, so it was kind of yeah. weird that you were getting lumped into it. Yeah, man, that too, that too. You know, I felt like we were always a punk band, no matter what. You know yeah. what I mean? And. It was just very hard for a lot of us. We were young and, and stupid, and I think, like, it was very much always in our blood as four people, for the most part, to, like, fuck up anything good handed to us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just kind of what happened. You remind me of, uh... Purposely, you yeah, know? same thing that, like, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite bands is Fishbone. Yeah. And they kind of, like, you know, sabotage themselves here and there, with, and they could have been huge as well, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. It's very... Not... not I understand. I've heard about a lot of the stuff that happened with Fishbone, but it was very sim- like similar for different reasons. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This might Self sabotage, man. <laughs> BC boy style, you know. Mm. <laughs> this. I hope this question isn't isn't uh isn't hard on you, but I figure since it's been like about fifteen years now, uh, can you guys uh or can you tell me when you guys dropped the ska music like? For the, the next two albums, what was the reason for that? Uh, the uh, self-title, we, we had just done a track called Rose Garden for that SLC movie. Right. right. And those guys are so hype on having a violin section and kennel drums and stuff. And everyone was listening to the Beatles and smoking a lot of weed. Mm-hmm. And they were like, they started writing all these pop songs. And I was trying to write punk songs for the band, but... The old bass player Royce and, and Dan started writing these crazy like Beatles esque songs, and I was like trying to talk them into let me at least change the lyrics and like maybe stick to their vocal patterns, and they wouldn't let me. Uh-huh. And so I kind of had to play by that rule of like, you know, it's democratic. This is what it's gonna be. So I just went along, and I you know, I didn't want to be the guy to say I told you so, but I told you so kind of. But I wasn't gonna quit my band or leave my friends over it. And uh, I got my couple of songs on it, but. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of what it went. You know, we did that Rose Garden track, and it just opened everyone's mind to writing something entirely different. You know what I mean? That's really what it was. Then you guys so. did it again for the uh, R.E.M. cover, though, pretty much. No, I don't think so. I no. think that that album was actually way back to a punk, you know what I mean? I think a lot of the problems... Like, that album's actually pretty punk, man. Speaking yeah. of punk, Mr. Porno Dave just walked in. Porno Dave is here. Um. <clears throat> anyways, uh, I think at the time... uh. The band was in such shambles and hated each other so bad. And then, then we were, I was trying to release punk songs for that album. Mm-hmm. It was just like everything about that record. That If anyone would be surprised, like, Steal This Record is the one I hate the most. I'm not surprised because I'll tell you a story. I was uh, back when AOL was the, the thing. You mm-hmm. can meet girls on there. I was talking to a, a chick at the time, and we loved the Suicide Machines. We would listen to it at the same time as we're IMing each other and, like, put lyrics Such the nerds. Thing. I know. <laughs> and um, so basically, when uh, Steal This Record came out, I hate to say it, but I I could not get back to the record store to return it. It was, fast sta- it was stagnant, man. So I, I, I called her. I'm like, did you get this album? And she's like, she was like, I threw that shit out the window as soon as I heard it. It's okay. It's stagnant, man. I'm, I'm embarrassed by that record. People are like, oh, you're not embarrassed by the self title? I'm like, not really. I learned how to sing on it for at least one good, you know there's something good that came out of it you know i did learn how to sing there was no pro tools yet right right but we went into that next album all everyone hating each other which did not help right everyone writing shit songs for the most part which didn't help 
And then they wanted to use Pro Tools on that record, and it just okay. became such a stagnant piece of... Like, the energy that you had on the uh, first two albums was not there in the recording studio, basically. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, even, even for Chris, like even the self-title had energy in it, but this thing just... I hate that record more than anything. <laughs> so, that record... We will just, not hear any songs from that tonight, probably. Yeah, that song... I mean, there's, like, two or three good songs on that record, and the rest of it's just... It's just shit garbage, man. It really is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think the other thing was is we knew that would be our last record for Hollywood, so I don't think we were really too into like... Oh, okay, like, so you were just filling the contractual I don't know about fulfilling the contractual obligation, but I knew it was a done deal, and we kind of I don't think anyone really gave a shit. It was kind of like, here's your record. Yeah. So I don't think anyone really put forth a super huge effort. It was really hard to even be in the same room with each other, you know? Hmm. Being in the same room with each other was impossible because we all hated each other, and then you, how are you supposed to write a record like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, then everything turned around because uh, you guys went to Side of One Dummy and then uh, you brought back the ska and the uh, political hardcore. So yeah. uh, well, um, what, what, what happened uh, that made you guys break up in 2006? Well, we, got, we, got, we, got, we didn't break up, but we got rid of Royce, our old bass player, who was kind of like the guy that wanted to keep writing pop. Right. right. Dan kind of got back on the page with me knowing that I was right and wanted to play punk and he kind of got back on that page too. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So it was just natural for Royce not to come along anymore. Okay. Because he did not want to play what we wanted to play. Right. And so we went and matched guessing, got this guy standing here, filthy, stinking rich, <laughs> come in, who to me is like probably the best bass player in Detroit. Uh -huh. And he was in a great fucking punk ska band called Bourgeois Filth. Okay. And it just seemed like the right thing to do. You know, and Ryan B at the time was playing with us, and that was his old homie. Mm -hmm. and we brought him in, and, and he was just, like, the perfect dude, you know what I mean, for for that, for, like, a match of some gasoline, like, it just all came together, you know, and, and if anything, that record's great. Yeah, yeah. And then War Profiteering is even better to me, if you, if you tell me, I mean, I, I think that that was probably one of the quintessential records by this band, probably, you know. Yeah, so you were at your peak, what what happened, where we it was, like... We had, like, two peaks. <laughs> yeah, second peak, and then I'm watch, I'm on I'm on the fan websites, and then I... I see that awful news that that, that you're breaking up. That's so that's what it said. What yeah, you're saying yeah. you didn't break up. It was just you guys kind of just stopped. Basically. Oh no, no, are you talking about during Warfare Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that yeah. was a breakup, man. Okay. Yeah, Make that's no why mistake. I want to know why. No, no, no. Everything seemed like it was working, and then. Uh, I it was getting to the point where I was starting to miss my kids a lot, and I needed a job because I couldn't necessarily afford to take care of all my kids and my wife. Uh huh. And so I I told them I was like, uh, I'm gonna get a job. Right. Uh, I will still go out on my vacation time and go out and do shows, you know, or do shows on weekends. And when I did vacation, I'll go out and do it like I'm doing now, you know. Yeah. And he wanted it at all. And we had already had, we'd already lost Rich again and Ryan again because they didn't like Dan. Okay. And uh, so I got Dan back on board going, okay, I get it. You need to take care of your family, but we'll, we'll do shit. I was like, all right, cool. And I got Rich and Ryan back on board. Mm -hmm. They said, you know what? I can handle it if it's in short increments with Dan because they just didn't like him okay and then I got got a hold of side one and I said hey you know we put out our records even though we're really not going to tour a lot and they're like yeah dude we'll put out records until you until you guys die okay we don't care right so that being said it kind of was all back on the same page we get out to LA to start for the Mexican the tour of Mexico uh and it's, it sounds completely stupid how this came about but the promoter over there rented the wrong guitar head for Dan so he couldn't even play ska that night Okay. He could only play punk. He had no foot switch. It was had no foot switching capabilities. Okay. Oh, yeah. Lost his mind. Got super pissed. It was a crazy show in L.A. We go upstairs after we're done. Place is starting to turn into riot. Kids won't leave. Kids are smashing bottles against the walls and shit. Mm -hmm. Promoter comes up. You guys got to play a couple more songs. They're just These kids are going to leave. We're going to call the cops. Because we're going nuts. I mean, people were climbing scaffoldings and stage diving during the show. And we sucked. It was such a bad set, too. Didn't matter. Dan's freaking out. No right. way. Fuck that. Fuck you. Fuck this. Fuck them. I'm not doing, you know, fuck that. And walks off, and Danny at the time from Against All Authority was playing bass, and he was like, hell, we can do the, the band song probably without him, right? And I was like, yep, let's go out and do it without him. <laughs> and we went out and did it without him, calling the crowd on, they left. And uh -huh. he was like, e fuck you for going out on stage without me. And that was that. that was he, was, he was, yep, he was in charge of all the flights to get people home and stuff. Like, that's his side of the band. Right. And he, fucked everyone damn yeah it was kind of bummer he like left in the middle of the night never changed anyone's flights stuck like me with everything stuck danny home? i dude i luckily my wife his her uh mom worked for united airlines 
So I paid out of like my pocket to fly them all back home, Danny to Florida and uh, Steve back to Detroit, and it sucked. I was uh, I was basically stuck in Ventura, California, for like a week with like no money. Luckily, I had a friend there I could stay on this floor, you know. So it took me a couple of days to get everyone back home, and that was that. It was a pretty bitter and bad situation. Damn, exclusive here, folks. You're getting exclusive inf- information right now, and uh. So this album tour, I want to ask. Uh, most bands like do like the milestone year, like ten years or twenty years. So why did you guys decide to do a nineteen year tour instead of twenty or something? Like that? I don't know. Honestly, it's just a, it was more, this tour came about really randomly. We we'd all bullshitted about the idea of doing the tour from right. time to time, and uh, we had originally. Cause you guys got back together in two thousand nine. Like, yeah, we did like we, little show, shows yeah, here and there. Yeah, yeah, we a lot of benefits and just festivals. You know what I mean. And, Nothing, that's kind of just how we did it, you know? And then uh, it came down to where, like, the only time that Rich and I could tour, the drummer at the time, Ryan, who played on the other two records, couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so we are like, ah, fuck, I guess we're just not going to tour, you know? And then and I was like, well, are you cool with me just seeing what Derek's up to? He's probably busy. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. But, you know, Ryan being the awesome dude he was, I was like, nah, fucking give him a call, you know? Uh-huh. he's like I'm cool with it you know I can't this is my busy season I sell houses for a living we're like cool so everyone got on board about it called him up he's like I got yeah man I got fucking I got it open so we booked a tour it wasn't even really I don't think it was even really decided yet that we were even gonna do destruction it was just like we are gonna go tour okay and then uh, Stormy the agent the booking agent was like well what are you gonna do about Break Anchor I know you have a record coming out and I was like uh yeah, we do, but I mean, this is the only tour I can do the whole year, you know? And she's like, well, why don't you take up Break Anchor? Is that too weird? And I was like, yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and uh, I I marinated on it for a couple of days, and then uh, I was like, well, fuck. Derek's got a record coming out. Break Anchor's got a record coming out. Which, Rich, by the way, Rich I listened worked... to a couple of days ago, because I really didn't wasn't familiar with it. But, like, honestly, that, uh, the album you just put out two days ago, like, it's... I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's amazing. Like, if you can imagine if... Uh, the Bouncing Souls and uh, Fugazi went into a room and had like a punk rock orgy. And <laughs> that's, then that's like fine. <laughs> you go in there and you and you and the people go and collect all the like, I wish you know, we were that good. <laughs> collect all the jizz and semen that you find in that after that, bring it to like a bunch of ladies and impregnate them with it. And then after about like twenty years they have like four boys and then they get in a time machine and go back to nineteen ninety five and they put out an album. That is what you have with the re- the recent Thank album you. they put out. You know what? That's the perfect description for the album. We should. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can say it again if you want. Before oh me, but... man, yeah. So yeah. And so and so rich. <laughs> Sweet. So I yeah okay. Anyways, yeah. So rich has bastardus too. His band and okay. and I said I called her back up and I said, well look, why don't we just do it like this? And she was like, that's awesome. That's a great idea. And I was like. All right, cool. Uh-huh. And so somehow everyone got out of work, and here we are, kind of little messed up circle of friends, hanging out, you know, just having fun. Yeah. And, that, and then the idea came later, like, well, why don't we just do Destruction beginning and end, because we never really did it. Okay. All right. You guys uh, just playing it just straightforward, or you guys doing all, alphabetical? Or? All the way through. Okay. Beginning to end. Just you guys like should it do is. it alphabetical. Like, start with, like, break the glass, end with zero. That would be kind of yeah. like, you know, yeah. people wouldn't expect that, you know? I, I they're getting what they're paid for, I guess. They know it, <laughs> what they're getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Beginning and end. All right, so. all right. So uh, I guess you pretty much answered this, but uh, since Dan and Royce were on that album, is there a reason why they're not on this tour? Uh, Royce doesn't really play bass too much anymore, man. That's he's, a shame. He's, I saw you guys at the first War Tour I went to in 97, and there's a, lot, there's, there's a rare amount of uh, bass players that play punk without a pick. Yeah, and he was he was tremendous, honestly. Oh, uh, dude, but let me just tell you, whatever. Filthy Rich crushes him. He crushes. I love I Royce. Can't Royce is my that. homie, and I think he's a great bass player, uh-huh. dude. Actually, no way. I've seen I've seen you guys at Warped Tour in two thousand two. I mean, sorry, two thousand and two thousand three. So I have seen him play. He's pay, good. Pay he's attention good. tonight. All right. <laughs> All right. This will be my fifth uh, um, suicide ten- suicide machine show. Dan lives in Japan, and we tried talking about a year ago. Uh-huh. Cause I was trying to get him to fly out to Detroit and play a show, and just trying to make amends with them. And 
he's still really not happy with me. You know what I mean? Even though I tried apologizing for going out on stage and playing a song with Jesus Adam. Jesus Christ, let that go. And Yeah, I know. And he just, who knows? It's not, Maybe it's not even a matter of letting it go. Maybe it's like, you know what? I've moved on. I live in Japan. Mm-hmm. i got a wife and kid. You know what I mean? I'm getting older. I just, you know, I don't really know what it is. I can only assume yeah. why, but he just kind of, I don't know. I think he... He's in bands as well out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So, I mean, I think he, maybe he's just content. You know what I mean? He's like, whatever, I don't, I'm good with not doing it. Yeah. So, we actually have Malik on guitar, who is the drummer of my other band, Hellmouth. Okay. So. What is, uh, Hellmouth's like pretty much a hardcore band, or? Uh, really them. It's like crust metal. Okay. You know what I mean? A slightly hardcore. Yeah. Play, we do play with bands like Trash Talk and stuff, but. You know, I, I don't know that I would necessarily call us hardcore. Okay. We don't put it on our shirts or anything like that, you know yeah. what I mean? Our so I guess, I guess uh, after this tour, what's what's the plans for Suicide, suicide Machines after that? There aren't any. No, just winging it? Or are you guys just still do shows in December in Detroit? Or? Well, we will always do a Christmas show, I think. And probably when I'm 80, I'll be up there in a wheelchair doing a Christmas <laughs> show. I, I just feel like hey, no one else... remember this song? Well, the, pro- the problem is, is in Detroit... We're the only band that can are is capable of making that happen. It seems like, and it's just such a fun tradition, and it's really awesome for all the other bands around the area to be able to play it and do it. That I just feel like I I kind of almost don't even want to do it anymore, but I also feel like it really. It 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 just I don't know. It's such a good time, and it it really does kind of bring a lot of bands to people's attention that necessarily wouldn't see or hear these bands. So okay. it's usually a lot of fun every year, you know what I mean? Like so, it's bittersweet. Like sometimes I do want to play Black Christmas, and sometimes I just don't. Mm. Is it like uh, cause you have other things going on, Christmas shopping, all that stuff, or is it just you? Nah, want to you know I don't that? know. I mean, it just seems, uh, it just seems repetitive, I guess, to me. I, mm. Regardless of, it's all different bands every year. I mean, this year is a negative approach in the Meat Men. You know what I mean? It's crazy, but it's just it's just very, I don't know, man. I mean, where do you? call it an end on that tradition yeah. like but i feel bad because they want to do it every year but i don't think they could make it as big as they could without us you know what i mean yeah and i would like to see that tradition carry on but i don't think there's anyone we can pass the torch to yet that can pull it off yeah you know what i mean that's all right, all right. well my final question i ask everybody is a hypothetical question so i'm going to let you choose the topics you can either pick a, a nerd question or would you rather question Uh, I'm not very smart, so I'll skip the nerd question. Okay, it's, I, it's more of a comic book thing. It's not like you have to I answer like the physical, I, physics, of, physics of something. It's I don't just... read comic books. Okay, all right. So, uh, what would you rather? Would you rather floss with piano wire or use a cactus for toilet paper? I'd rather just cut someone's head off with piano wire. <laughs> oh, you can't just divert. You got to pick one or the other. I think out of the box, my friend. All right, that's what's so good about this man. <laughs> all right, if you get a chance. Come check out these guys in the tour. It's only it's only gonna be like for another week or so. But uh, if you're not if you're in the Detroit area, check them out. Black Christmas, or if they ever yeah. do these random tours, you gotta see this band. It's amazing. Catch it while you can, because to be honest with you, I don't know that I've ever heard this band sound better. Be totally honest with you. Yeah, and I really you, can't recall it sounding better than this. And if you can't do that, pick up the destruction. My definition, it is a quintessential ska punk album that will live on in infamy. And that's weird. Thank you very much for this interview. Joel, thank you. I appreciate it. We're shaking hands right now. You can't yeah. hear it, though. <laughs> Listen to the Paul hand Harry, shaking. Oh, we're going we're gonna to smack hands. There we go. We high five. <laughs> What's the sound of one hand go. clapping with one hand? That was it. And this is Jarrell from Hybrid Radio signing out, and have a good one.